Good evening and welcome back to my channel. So it occurred to me that over the last <clears throat> three, four days, I've actually made quite a bit of progress and haven't really captured what I was doing. So I'm going to try to make up for that. Um, first things I did show, um, the last video was about filling gaps, right? Um, and, and so on. Uh, the next thing that was left to do was to bring in and put on the cockpit. So, you know, I've installed the cockpit and we have, you, know, you can see a little bit of where the green stuff is right there and how it aligns. Okay. So the way the cockpit fits to the front, you know, it can sort of, you know, slide up or slide down. It all depends on how you, you've got this thing balanced out. So, um, what I, what I did is I did take some pictures about, you know, that, that sort of showed me putting where the gaps were and how I filled the gaps for that. So I'm going to cut to those right here. So here we are putting on the green stuff, you know, just follow the contours of the piece and get things to set up sort of straight. Um, you'll see how big of a gap. That's how big of a gap you kind of get with the piece that comes with the kit. So you just have to fill it in. Um, when you put it in, make sure you've checked your alignment up and down, side to side, so that doesn't drive you nuts, because it would me. And when I was done, I went back and checked the wiring, because it would really be a shame to get it all on and find out you have to rip it off. Okay, those were, you know, uh, just some some still images of, of me putting the cockpit on. Um, once the cockpit piece is in place, then you just go back and fill. And you can kind of see here, um, I've got the base coat down, that there's still some pitting and some some stuff here. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to refill and resand this and get that a little more smooth. Um, something that the the overcoat actually is also showing is these scribe lines, um, these panel lines. These are all scribe lines that I put in here, 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 here. Um, I think they definitely add more interest to those those wide open surfaces, um, those those nice smooth flat surfaces. If you go back and actually look at the original, um, I don't recommend you do that because then you'll start finding a bunch of, of gaps and details here um, that maybe you um, what will find yourself wanting to adapt to, but you know, that adds a little more, I think, to to give this thing a little more realism, a little more nice look to it. So at least that was my opinion. Um, you can see here, uh, if I get the light just so, you can see where the filler was there. Um, but that definitely helped. You know, the, that seam is pretty well covered. I'm going to go back, re-sand this one, as well as this other one over here. Because you can kind of see it, but the gap for the most part, except for right there, is mostly filled. And... We just need to clean that up a little. So that's, you know, if we look up here, pop these open, you know, for the most part, that's got a little bit of stuff there, but that's, I mean, in all honesty, that's going to hide in your detail shading. Okay, so what else about this? Um, the lighting was done. Um, I did run the lights. I ended up having to run a second switch for the front half of the model because I screwed up. Um, I wasn't paying attention on how I ran the wiring um, and I thought I understood how, how I was running it, but I didn't. Um, and so I ended up having to put another switch in. So that switch went right there. And then that does the front and with the masking down, you can't see up in the cockpit, but you know, that also lights up the cockpit. And then the switch to the back, which is right under the tail, lights up those. Now, that's through the mask material, so that's all that. Um, what I did underneath um, to make it prettier. You can see that you know I built a false roof um, and left access to where the batteries are. Um, all the wires come out of the front and in the cockpit you know there's there's quite a few there's a lot of wiring that comes out of here and it just gave me all the space to work with so where the wires come through here 
to go up to go back to the switches and go back to the engines they they all kind of make a mess in here and i i locked them down with green stuff which you can see there but it still kind of looked crappy and i thought about overlaying it with with um aerofoam but then i was like you know what why i can just put a plate in here and then what i can do is i can go ahead and detail up this if i want to if i really really want to I can make a cover that just covers these as well, you know, that, so, you know, take cardstock, right? We'll just use this, toughest goes to the gassy. Guy's pretty cool, huh? Um, and just put a quick magnet on there so that that'll just click, you know, so cut this or cut cardstock so that it fits right there and then just drops in and then paint. And, and I'll probably do exactly that, um, you know, just, Put a magnet here, put a magnet on the cardstock, done. Um, and then I can paint up in here and I can put little detail stuff up in here. Um, all of this is not going to be seen unless you pick up the model and look underneath it. Um, and you know, we've talked about that before. So that's the wiring. Um, again, this is the switch to the front. You know, and you can see those go on. And then this is the switch to the back. So I finished, I'll uh, cover this a little bit more, and then once once I get the base coat down here to see where else I need to be sanding, then I can finish the base coating and then start all the work. So what did I do? Oh, excuse me. So I also mentioned that I had done it so you could do this gear up or gear down. So how did I do that? We've already gone over, you know, the, the magnets for those pieces, right? So we've got that, and then we've got the gear up piece. But the really cool thing was this so you go in you put these together right and then they will slot in by friction i didn't even need to magnetize them at all friction worked so i have a little more sanding and filling to do and then i can resand those um, but again this is the bottom so when this is on display and sitting it's just sort of sitting and you're not going to see that but i will do that anyway but here's the part that actually is mostly relevant to what we're looking at. We wanted to do flight. So I told, I mentioned, I pointed out in the last video that I was going to cut and make a, a mount for it. So that's exactly what I did. I cut it, mounted it, and then it's mounted with, this is all green stuff, a lot of it. Um, what it looks like in here is irrelevant. What matters is this is solid. Um, this is held at the angle that I need. So that the when this is down, the the dropship takes a decent angle. But what happens is these pieces right here slot in again, right there. So the way you do this, right? So the way I did this was I took this piece and I laid it in, and I laid that that um, this cover down. And then green stuffed those into place so that they they were locked into where they needed to be. Um, and I let those cure well. So now that's a, a good solid join there. And then this join here, this comes up and this is all rock hard now. This is all green stuff. This is all fully cured green stuff. It, the um, If I wanted to for cleanliness, I could whack that off, but there's no point. Again, what's up in here doesn't matter. Because once this is slotted in, that part of it doesn't get seen. We don't care. But what we do care about is this. It's solid. Now it's a little wobbly, but that's the stand. You know, that's that's what this stand can do. But the way this is displayed, or the way this goes in there, you can see the angle. That holds it very, very well. I can open up my wings. It doesn't matter. This has a good, solid base. I don't know if the wobble bothers you, you can just touch it. Um, so from here, that takes care of the flight version. So now I can display this model in either gear up or gear down, or either in flight or you know, landed. And I did not need magnets. 
So, that, in a nutshell, is where what I've done and how this has all gone together. And now, I am, for the most part, at the stage where I do a little more painting um, and sanding. And by the way, that's how those work. I, I didn't get a chance to show you guys that. So that can go in like that, or just pull it straight down. Get that in to that part. No, oh, it's in that way. So either way, that can be displayed either open or closed as well. And that's, you know, I went over the procedure on how I did that. So all of that, okay, this is me babbling now for 10 minutes, but all of that here are the basic modifications I did to, to this kit. Um, now, now it's a matter of doing the finishing work. You know, I've got some pitting here, a little pitting there, a little bit there. You know, you can see, remember that join we talked about, that really ugly join that was right here. That just needs to be filled a little bit more right there, and then that's smooth. Um, I'm going to surface fill this a little more and then resand it because there's there's a little pitting here, um, a little pitting there, and that's all I'm worried about. And then now, now that that's done, we start the long involved painting process. Um, I don't know how much of the painting process I will be videoing because it's it's done in. In, in little bursts with me, um, but I'm going to try. Um, I did find a link to pictures of the original filming model, or what's left of the original filming model after a re reconstruction about, I guess, six, seven years ago. Um, I will put that link down down below uh, if you want to follow that. It's on the RPF. Um, it's, uh, it, it's good detail um, to look at. Um, First thing I notice is this is the wrong color. You know, the the color of the model is a much more dark gray, um, sort of with greenish highlights. That's not going to stop me at all. I'm going to run with this, right? I'm going to I'm going to run with this U.S. drab, and we are going to weather the heck out of it. Um, I'm going to use that link and those images as inspiration. I am not, and I repeat, not trying to completely duplicate what that model is not with not with this one um those who are are you know hyper focused on the accuracy of um of that kit or of that model as compared to this kit um your your heads would be exploding right about now because you can see all the details and all the differences and that's not what this is about this entire video series is about taking the, the model that we get from Protoss Games and making a get, getting a good result from it. Um, yes, I went over the top. The whole lighting bit, the cockpit thing, that's going over the top, but I do that anyway. My, my battle mechs, I do that with all my battle mechs. I build cockpits. Um, I light them because I like what they do. And the effort to do that is not that much more than what I would do to just put the model together anyway. Um, so, anyway, I hope that this series has been, so far, entertaining and educational for those who um, are working on their own model kit here. Um, I can see, this, see there's gapage up here I need to fill too. Um, so there's still some things to work on, a little bit of, of minor fixing details, and then we get into painting. So I'm going to be looking at the, um, the original for weathering hints more than for actual color direction you know i'm, I'm starting I'm going to work with the the base here so the the missiles are all white right in the in the base the missiles these missiles here um and the tips of the ones that are up in oops, that are up in here um all of those missiles are white with with stripes and so forth and that's stuff that i could duplicate um It'll just take a bit. And then once those are done, we'll go through and put in, um, you know, weathering and, and, and shading and so forth. So that's what we have there. Um, I remember when I mentioned this, right? 
um, the if you look at the filming miniature, you can see that the under housings had multiple different, you know, they were mounted differently from this, etc. Um, I know that the client, 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 my friend, um, still hasn't heard back from Protos about these. Um, it's, it's now a little bit, so he's going to follow up again. So when future me gets to looking at my own, I, I, I kind of did that. <laughs> um, I'm going to mold this up, cast it and see if I can rebuild this from scratch. If I can't, if we don't get a positive response from Protos. But anyway, um, there was that. What else was I, what else did I custom do? Don't recall. Anyway. Um, again, that's the work that we've done on this. We, meaning I, this team, has done on this so far. Um, please, if you have questions, um, hints, I uh, would like to know if there's something that I sort of glossed over um, and we missed um, and you'd like to see, let me know. And I can go back and I, or I can demonstrate what it was I've done up to this point. But uh, next up will be more painting. Um, this is where it gets entertaining because I will be stretching my skill set because painting is uh, painting is where I have I really need to do some work. So um, 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 there will also be some custom water slide transfers because the, the, the numbers that go here, the other markings... The markings that go up here, I'll probably hand paint, mask and paint. Uh, but the numbers, um, I need to get custom water slide transfers. I need to get the nose art. Uh, I need to figure out what I'm going to do with that. Um, but yeah, that's that's where we are. I hope this is helpful and, and inspired you all. And I'll stop babbling. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you next time.